It was recently announced that the upcoming 40k video game Bolt Gun will feature an Ultramarine Sternguard veteran protagonist, voiced by famous actor man and Warhammer nerd Rahul Kohli. Sounds to me like an excuse for me to recruit my buddy Dan to kitbash up Rahul's character so I can paint it. And while we're at it, let's have a little chitty chat with Rahul himself about his journey into the Warhammer hobby. All right, I hear you like to be called Rahultra Marine Coley via your rider. Is there any other things in your rider I need to be aware of? Uh, well, you also had the coffee scent. Oh, yeah, for sure. That was a demand. I assume that you started in the Warhammer hobby and painting miniatures just to get this job. Is that correct? I had to do it to get the job. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the audition was you had to bring your own mini. It was like Golden Demons, Golden Voice. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah no it's all happened super fast from like i picked up the first my first like box of space marines um just like some intercessors january of last year while i was filming a show i decided i'm a, i'm away from home a lot obviously through travel so mm -hmm. i decided like um, and I done it was actually through Sarastero mm -hmm. and this is a name droppy thing, but Sam Whitwer, uh, he paints Star Wars Legion mm -hmm. and through a mutual friend, he got me into Star Wars Legion and Sarastro's YouTube guide. So I was doing a few of those like Star Wars Legion minis. Um, but I, yeah, I didn't really go too hard in it. And then I had made this decision that while I'm traveling, why don't I bring some painting gear with me? Like, let's like let's have it at the hotel or whatever, because I've got so much time to kill when I'm not at work. And instead of bringing any minis, I went and bought a box of Ultramarines. And then I went on YouTube and tried to find my tutorials and what's the best color guides and stuff. And that's how I found you guys. Okay, so in like a year, mm. you you have not only progressed as a painter quite a bit, uh, impressive amount um but also like seem to this be associated with the kinds of things you like to do in your free time on a regular basis yeah um did did you have a background in art other than the the acting arts uh well thank you for that um i think you guys are a, a big part of that reason why i leveled up um but uh i, I mean yeah sort of like I could draw at school. Mm -hmm. I was pretty good at drawing. Um, I've always taken to creative stuff pretty quickly. If if I learn the tools, I can. I'm I'm all, always. I can always start at a decent level with anything artistic. I had the opposite with sports. Mm. I did, nothing couldn't do anything. But um, yeah, I I I think the thing I did the most was uh, there was a period of time. This is before I had my kind of big break, and I was you know, just sort of at home in the UK. I was I was working on model kits. Um, at the time, it was Star Wars model kits. It was when uh, Fine Molds had the contracts and I was working, on, like learning to airbrush. I really wanted to like make them look like the studio models with the same damage. And so I had the sculpting a galaxy book and yeah, just, just that that's where I started, but I wasn't hand painting anything. I guess I would probably just do the pilot, but that was like, but just one color right really kind of like blotchy thick straight out of the tin i, I kind of had a background but then real quickly uh after painting the first space marine i found out what heavy metal was oh and i feel like that's this virus that infects you and takes over and now i it, it it's completely di it dictates how i paint something or want to paint something i wish i never freaking learned what that was it's become this holy grail yeah and i remember you watching you did a great one um and i was trying to learn from it um where you did some of the heavy metal things mm -hmm. uh, but i honestly the, the biggest the biggest level up game for me single-handedly has been uh youtube it really has yourself miniac um squid mar obviously sarastero infernal brush uh yeah i've just and then obviously i've been very fortunate that Dar uh darren latham who obviously works at gw has been like a mr miyagi for me and facetiming me and showing me how to glaze and 
all of that stuff and so he's they you all have helped a lot to help me get to that point i assume there's a montage video somewhere out there set to 80s action movie music where darren is screaming in your ear and you have to yeah. lick, lick your paintbrush and but it's still it's over facetime as well mm. so it makes it even weirder so it's like daniel son when he was on the boat but darren's on a on a zoom call just <laughs> at the bow whatever funnily enough i was always asked like what do you listen to when you paint and i'd realized for the last eight months i've been of painting i do it in silence which i feel is like a proper serial killer thing to do i'm just hunched <laughs> over this table there's no headphones just breathing mm. um and in the last like month or two i i because i just thought it was weird i started like putting on like a podcast or whatever and it's usually like true crime oh, so yeah. it's still serial killer yeah. related mm. So there's this website, it's called imdb.com. I don't know if you've heard of it. It allows you to internet stalk um, oh, sweet. and criticize every bit of work that somebody in the in your field does. Yeah. So do you have off the top of your head the, uh, the silliest or dumbest line you've ever had to give in a voiceover? In a voiceover? I've been really lucky. The silliest stuff I've ever had to do was, I, I, I couldn't book a job to save my life when I lived back in the UK. I did commercials mm. and that is soul crushing. My first gig was um, Gears of War mm. and they were looking for someone to play Fars and I was working on iZombie uh, in, in Vancouver and a friend suggested me to Rod Ferguson as someone to audition. That was what it was and i didn't have a reel so it's not like my material was submitted it was just someone was like hey i know someone i watch i zombie you should you should ask him and i went in and read for it i don't really know what i was doing and and i booked it and i was like oh cool first game triple a so i just kind of fell into that and no then problem. yeah and then it was like id reached out for rage uh, -huh. uh rage 2 because i was a big mm. id, id software fan and then the same happened with Ghostbusters and Fortnite and whatever else there is. It's all it's all just been offers, really. Um, Bolt Gun was the same. Bolt Gun was really interesting because when that trailer was it last year at Skulls, I'm a massive. I mean, like I'm a huge Doom fan. Like Doom '93 changed my life, so I still love Boomer Shooters. To uh, uh, so I'm chosen Ultramarines as my chapter. I'm painting. I'm a massive Doom guy, and I see this Doom Warhammer hybrid. And I there's when I had Twitter at the time. I tweeted, um, "This game was made for me." Something just like that. And then Auroc got in touch with me and were like, "Can we would like to? Can you sign an NDA? We want to talk to you." Yeah, I thought they were just going to ask me to to play it, um, but they they were like, "Yeah, would you would you like to voice the lead?" I didn't even know there was a voice to this game because I was like, it's Doom in it. It doesn't speak. But <laughs> um but no, there was and um yeah, it's it's a taunt button. You oh. hit it and then, you know, for the Emperor, heretics and all of oh. that good stuff. Um yeah, I've been so lucky, man. It's it's been all all my crap, even the the, the the TV and film stuff has all been in that kind of geek world. Like mm. Yeah, it's I've been very fortunate. So really it sounds like it's just, you know, just like nerdy stuff, it sounds like it has nothing to do with anything to do with talent. Oh, um, absolutely not. Or good looks or years of experience. I'm glad that those things aren't required. Right. And it Today's video is brought to us by our friends over at White Werewolf Tavern, creators of some wild, high-quality minis for you to 3D print at home. Each monthly Patreon release has a minimum of 25 unique STLs that can be used in a variety of tabletop RPGs and war games, as well as 75mm scale and bust pieces for display piece painting. In the April White Werewolf Tavern release, The Light Conclave, you get 34 unique fantasy miniatures. All subscribers also get access to two welcome chests full of free goodies. One of my favorite things about the White Werewolf Patreon is their loyalty program. You're automatically enrolled by subscribing two consecutive months and you automatically get an extra miniature. And after three months of consecutive subscription, you get access to the Mighty King Ion Car Mini, which is only available through this loyalty program. 
And as an extra special bonus by watching this video, you get access to an amazing 40% off discount and White Werewolf Tavern's My Mini Factory page. So check the links below for both their My Mini Factory page and their Patreon. A big thank you to White Werewolf Tavern. Let's get back to the video. I used to walk past games workshops back in the UK when I was a kid and just be like, nerds! <laughs> uh, <laughs> they have a Bible, mm -hmm. like um, a character Bible. So when I was recording or about to record, they sent me from GW what they send anyone who's working on the animation or voice and stuff. And it's like do's and don'ts. And they were very, very specific about voice, which makes sense because they trying to keep a nice... I guess, like uniform across. Mm -hmm. You're not just going to get a space marine from Texas. You probably had a, a nerd background that runs pretty deep. So what what was yours? Was it video games? Oh, video games for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's the foundation of it all, really. Because I think video games, because I liked it in such a broad sense and I wasn't just particularly into one type of genre, mm -hmm. um, I would have dabbled in real-time strategies and battle sims and things like that and RPGs and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And um, when I, I'm still not a player. Um, that's not, I'm trying to and I'm learning, but no one wants to play with me. Um, yeah, I mean. And I also can't paint quick enough my armies because no. like my girlfriend wants to play kill team. Okay. But my, even my kill team has to look every metal. I'm never going to finish <laughs> it. It's I told you fucking every metal um but yeah i um i i realized when i did play a little bit and i was learning i was like oh it's the video game oh okay i'm i'm rolling to see you know if my shots hit i, I guess this is just i'm having to do all the math now yes yeah there's yeah. no computer it's video games for math nerds really yeah is all it is yeah i do like the measuring tape thing though i think that's awesome yeah yeah, because every time you 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 like make a cocky move, you can hit the button where it like slides back in and makes that clear. <laughs> oh, and you just time it. Yeah, got him. I like doing it when I knew that they were in range and still measure out anyway. That feels really <laughs> good to just still do it. But okay. yeah, like video games definitely keep like kept me in that, and it was also the easiest way to learn some of the Warhammer lore because oh. there was so much content, right? And I'm not going to read all the books because I'm dumb, yeah. and um. So it was easier to just play Space Marine. It was easier to just, you know, play Dark Tide and learn in, in bite-sized bits. And that's, so that's how that kind of happened. I, I, I need to be careful what I ask for. I yeah. try, like, I used to encourage, I do, and I do, I encourage fan art. I love art. So if you draw stuff of me and my characters or whatever, I, I celebrate it. And things got real spicy. Oh yeah! I, as yeah. soon as you started that sentence, I'm like, no, 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 oh, no, yeah. no, no. But here's the thing: I because I celebrate. I some of the worst ones I got. Um, I bought the original from them mm -hmm. and took it and got it framed, and uh, they in front of my toilet. <laughs> so when you sit down in my toilet, it's in your eye line is my uh, <laughs> uh, butt hole. <laughs> yeah. There's just dicks everywhere. I don't know. Yeah. It's the most... I also got one blown up, gigantic, uh, and it's sitting. And I need to take it to the frame shop. I've had it for two years. It's a, it's a, it's, it's basically it's gay fan art of uh, a character I played on the Haunting of Blind Manor. I got it framed, and I'm tr and but COVID happened because what I was going to do is I was going to put it in Flanagan's office, Mike Flanagan's <laughs> yeah. office, and his, and his wife was going to help me sneak it in, and I was just going <laughs> to sign it and have it giant on the wall. <laughs> we still haven't we haven't done it yet, and he he doesn't watch your channel, unfortunately, so it's know. not a spoiler. All right, so what you don't know is that this entire time I have been painting a model um, while we've been talking. Uh, you can't okay. see it, and I'm not going to show it to you, but you have to trust me. Uh, but everyone watching this video will have seen it. And it is my version of you, Rahultra Marine, of the Bolt Gun fame. Oh, yes, yeah, that was that was totally unrehearsed, natural reaction. <laughs> so what I kind do of don't want to see this because I know I've done one, and I know I'm really proud of my little first ever kit bash conversion. I, you should be. And it looks great. No, yeah, it looks great because it has no competition. <laughs> <laughs> you did the Bolt Gun art. Yes. Cover up box art. Yeah, so I did that. And then I'm going to send that over to you. And then you can use that um, as like the leader of your kill team. Uh, oh. 
to or can i submit it to, is it good can i submit it to golden demon yeah yeah don't <laughs> as my own yeah i i'm gonna make sure that on the bottom of the base i say me rahul Kohli, painted this miniature nobody else painted it especially not yeah ninjon yeah it's yeah you're gonna have to go around the inside of the base room with all that text but then you just show that to them and they'll be like okay all right, well, thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate taking up your super busy time that you totally weren't sleeping and ordering <laughs> coffee instead of getting it yourself and playing with your uh, Star Wars dolls. Just thank you. And yeah. thank you for having me on. Like, you, were, again, were one of the first channels. Um, and, yeah, it's wild to be sitting there talking to you. And, and again, and, and then now you're doing a bolt gun marine for me. Yeah. I, keep, I keep winning and I don't deserve it. So thank you so much. Well, that was quite the trip now, wasn't it? I know this was a slight departure from my usual video style and let me know down in the comments below if you like strange things like this. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I loved hanging out and chatting with Rahul. As I said in the video, as a small thank you to Rahul for taking some time with me, I'm gonna send him over the Stern Guard veteran that I painted up in today's video so maybe he can use it in his next game of 40K or Kill Team. And while I'm thanking people, I need to thank you, my patrons. It's because of you I can commit my work days to creating and coordinating videos like this. None of this would be possible without your support. And don't worry, I'm going to see you back here again real soon. And make sure sometime between now and then you find time in your day to slay the gray. I'm going to, my dog, can you hear my dog snoring? Yeah, I just caught that. <laughs> Paint a miniature with a butthole. And you too can have it live in someone's bathroom forever. Rhinox hides. <laughs> Mornfang. Scrag? <laughs>